Hiya, Sean. Great to meet you. No, same here. Uh, glad to be on, on, on with you guys. All right. Uh, you know you have a screen share option if you want to show your websites, plural, or any instruments that we're going to be talking about. Otherwise, cool. yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah. Just pulling some stuff out right now just so we can, uh, okay. we can get to that. A little gravity today. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton, the apple kind of <laughs> hit him Not on the head right? for a half a day, like Blake says. At least, <laughs> at least for an hour or so, we're lower. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. what, do you see the screen share option, buddy? Yeah, there you go. See okay. It. Yeah, got you now, Avery and Company. So, you know, I usually start off, Sean, by asking people about how they got into the industry and the business, but you know, I read a little bit about you on your uh, your your site, uh, Avery Company, and you know, a lot of people it's serendipitous. Like for me, when I got out of school, I was a journalism major. I had no idea what I was going to do, even though I was in the middle of the cornfields in DeKalb, Illinois. I, I didn't dream of you know being a commodity trader. So you know, it didn't happen to me until. Uh, as I was wandering around, wondering what I was going to do since I was out of college, someone invited me to the Merv. And then, you know, when I saw the belly pit go fast market, I was hooked from the gallery. I said, oh, this is for me. So you already knew. Uh, you were taking finance in college. So I'm curious how early you were already gravitating towards the investment arena. Yeah, I mean, uh pretty early uh it, it's obviously a space where uh, you, you think about it you're talking about making money analyzing things and, and trying to make money i mean that should interest anybody that's uh 15 16 17 years old um and essentially because that's you needed money you needed money to get the girl didn't you well maybe <laughs> not in high school but later on anyway so uh were you trading while you were in college or investing? Uh, did your father or someone in your family do it to help you catch yeah, the so bug? A lot of my a lot of my family is in real estate, uh, both investing, um, uh, investment banking, and, and all that. Okay. So I had a natural inclination that finance was the, was the side I wanted to do it to. Yeah, uh, okay. It was in your it was in your DNA, buddy. Yeah, and then my dad always had CNBC on and and all that. Uh, good stuff with, with the ticker feed. So I was growing up, I, I was naturally around it, and I couldn't understand the ticker feed for the, for the life of me at 15 years old. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I, I fell in love with it. I, I love analyzing, right? So that that's really the drive. Um, and at, coming out the other side and being right. So uh, I think that's what what's really uh, the driver. Okay. All right. So uh, also in my due diligence and reading about you, uh, you really come from the bottoms up type approach. Uh, fundamentals are very important to you. It's almost like fundamentals are most of it and you blend technicals for the timing. So uh, why don't you tell us what you look for and then maybe give us a few examples of growth opportunities and technology. I'm also curious with the big parabolic move run we've had what you what you're doing and what you tell people uh with where the market is now yeah so it's really uh so yeah it is a blended approach with with fundamental slash uh the bottoms up type of approach i mean we're looking for companies that's i mean that's the best way to explain it um we're looking at companies to invest in um and when we're doing so we're really looking at it from uh, multiple angles and kind of how to get to a, a starting point. Because a lot of people go in and, and they, they, they want to invest or find something, but they don't really know exactly where to start. Um, so we've actually, I don't know if you can see the screen, the idea sourcing vertical. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, we're really happy. This is where we start. Uh, so we, we break it down into really five different categories. And, and, uh, and, and one is theme-based. So think of uh electronic arts and, and that's not a recommendation but electronic arts is in a space where there's been a massive shift over the last several years from from physical to digital you used to get the cd-roms in the mail now you get 
a software update that's quick and seamless. Um, and then they have the live uh, gaming where you're purchasing in-app or in-game. In and it, all this is just driven by the innovations around technology, uh, the internet, and, and the speed of, of, of that, those transfers. Um, so it, it's an area that we, we spotted and we said, okay, in this area of digital transformation, which is a, a buzzword today, but it, it really started four, five, six years ago, um, the, it, it was, w where can we go? And, and Electronic Arts was a perfect example, and they've done very little, right? They changed their CEO to Andrew Wilson, and they focused on that digital shift. And what has that done for them? It's transformed their business from a 40% gross margin business to a 70% gross margin business to a almost $2 billion cash flow business when they weren't making anything and the, and the entire business was extremely volatile three, four, five, six years ago um, to much more of this subscription-like uh, consistent cash flow business. So theme-based is, is anything and everything, right? You got to get creative and try to get there before everyone else does. Um, and then we move into financial base. So your average person. So let, when they start let me just stop you for a second. Uh, so the shift that the, that they made, electronic arts, I believe you're talking about. Yeah. Um, is, is the management? I mean, they're the ones making the decisions and and steering the ship, right? So, as part of your theme analysis, management, the CEO, and having confidence in who's guiding the whole company. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you need a good CEO, uh, whether it's a transformation or just keep it going. Uh, and Warren Buffett likes to say that eventually uh, uh, an idiot's going to run the show. So you want an economic mode around your business, uh, which is true. And, and, and that's important as well. The business itself being able to defend itself without a management team completely destroying it. Um, but when you're talking about, yeah, these, these transformations to the upside, uh, yeah. You need someone that can execute and, and inspire because, uh, I mean, he has thousands yeah. of workers, workers under him. They, they, have, to be a, they have to have a vision that translates to the, uh, the whole company, permeates the company, and it's their vision, right? For sure, exactly. And you can see the shift here on the screen. You can see, uh, you can see back in, in 2009, 40% margins up to 75% gross margins today, and that's a lot of that has to do with simply bringing out there or, or shifting from that physical to digital model. Um, okay. And that's a lot of money. Uh, so it's, it's money to investors. And if you catch it early enough uh, and you pay the right price, obviously, um, you can be rewarded handsomely. Uh, then financial base is – here's one thing that we, that we think, I think, much more contrarian to everybody else. It's um, a lot of people will go into a screener, whether it's on whatever – screening tool you use and you go in there and you're like, okay, I want a company growing at 40% revenue year over year and 85% gross margins with 40% profit margins and, and all the good stuff trading at 10 times earning. Um, perfect company. Anyone would want that. But, but the truth is, is you're not going to, if everyone's screening for that. So you got to kind of take an opposite approach and, and look for, for some of those, but also, uh, where are you going to find something where no one's looking? And, and, and just one of the screeners that we like is just negative net income, positive operating cash flow with limited stock-based compensation. And uh, what does that do? I mean, it, it takes out all the people screening for just positive net income, but the, the company might be generating a lot of cash flow at the end of the day. Um, and that gets us to a good starting point of, of companies where we can potentially uh, act on um, where, where, again, they're, they're, they're generating – profits in a way, uh, but not um, accounting profits, but they are generating cash profits. So financial base is an interesting way. We then go to uh, uh, weak sector transitions. I mean, it's always happening. And this is why this plays a vital role because technology is, is performing extremely well, software and, and some of the other aspects of, of, of semiconductors and, and everything. But uh, th there's areas like retail, there's areas like I was just going to say that, uh, Sean, that, you know, I'm looking at that weak sector where the strong survives. So uh, it's one of the weakest sectors of uh, retail. And uh, are you currently screening things to see 
uh, which ones survived the Baton Death March and might even have a good Christmas? Yeah, so we did a we. I, I, I'd like to say we did a pretty good job here, um, and I don't think the story's over. <clears throat> and we're sourcing other ideas, but one of the ideas a couple of years ago um, was actually well, recently within the last year was um, we kind of have a little checklist. It's it's okay, who's going to survive in these these weak areas? It's for those with a good brand, uh, whether it's the technology that they're, they're using, like a, um, well, that's not retail, but Halliburton in the energy space. But then uh, in the retail space, it's who has a good brand, a brand that um, could last essentially a lifetime. Um, and then who doesn't have debt uh, or a lot of debt uh, and know. plenty of cash? And the, the most important thing there is you, you can survive. Um, in in times of of, of, of uh, negativity, I mean, just think of people in 2007, 2008. The people that went through the worst part of that and and didn't come out on the other side were the ones that were over levered and uh, no cash, and and everyone that had cash obviously made out, and uh, that's why you have this separation uh, in, in in the economy. But besides that, it's it's we started looking at a, a, a company called Michael Kors. Um, and Michael Kors has been uh, one where if you did some of the right due diligence, you saw that on the social media side um, and online uh, e-commerce, they're actually doing some really good things. Uh, everything from their push on Instagram to they dress, they've they dressed the last three first ladies. Um, so that speaks legacy right there. Um, and we did a lot of due diligence to figure out whether this brand was something meaningful to millennials and a lot of people were looking at revenue growth declining but if you actually paid close attention they were actually selling more units so people were buying more michael kors products um but the the revenue was declining because the shift i mean not to get too into uh into michael kors products but they were selling previously a lot of handbags um the large size ones to shifting to the more small um uh, kind of pouches that what, were what, lower what cost. Carry, what more. do you carry around with you, Sean? <laughs> a fanny pack <laughs> with Avery on it, and uh, yeah. uh, but it's Michael Kors. Yeah, it's a Michael Kors pack. Um, All right, okay, buddy. I'm but a yeah, little pouch, cool. but that's you know ten extra pounds I carry around. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm interested uh, while you're going through this, your fundamental analysis. Do you complete this whole exercise before you even look at a chart? Yeah, so I'm, I mean, I'm looking at charts all day because uh, that's what <laughs> that's what's happening daily. These things right. don't happen daily. These are very long uh, term things where you only get information every so often. Got to due diligence you're doing in between, but we're always looking at charts. And before we pull the trigger, that's how technicals comes in, and it's it's. Um, very simplistic. I mean, we're not trying to use any of um, some of the more complex uh, readings or indicators. It's, I mean, it's really looking for areas that we think are support. Uh, we're looking for momentum shifts, uh, whether it's divergences in MACD or divergences in RSI or looking at simple moving averages. Um, I mean, those are like the key components, but it, it's ensuring that on the way in, we're, we're, uh, we're starting on the right foot. Uh, on each investment because in the short term the markets can do whatever they want and uh, if we're right about our thesis then then we'll be right uh, but again we want to give our uh, myself and our clients a, a good experience right from the get-go okay so uh, timing comes in and uh, so the, uh, I believe that with your kind of fundamental analysis you're looking for things that the market hasn't yet recognized the value and uh, you're looking at, you know, the relative strength of a weak sector. So can you say at the beginning of your ideas, you're more counter trend, and then as they play out, you become part of the trend? Uh, sometimes. I mean, so, so that's kind of like the, uh, the the value versus growth, and are you only on the value side? I mean, we, <clears throat> I mean now I'm getting into the weeds again, but value, to us is anything uh, is there value in this business whether it's contrarian to the downside where again this is a weak sector or or this is the sales force of the world 
um, where you're actually contrarian to the upside and the trend is actually in your favor uh, from a technical perspective and a business perspective, but you're, you still think the market's mispricing uh, what this asset's worth. Is, is Salesforce going to be a new operating system uh, and everyone's going to build on top of it um, and take over the client server industry, which is like $1.5 trillion. They're only capturing 10, 20 billion today. If you think that, then then there's significant value left. Um, I know on the other side, it's it's like a Michael Kors is, is, uh, is there value left even though uh, the trends, both technically and uh, operation-wise, are negative. So, so we we try to be contrarian uh, in in the sense of we're looking for value and 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 anything that makes sense. That's why we had these idea verticals, which they're very different themes, very different than weak sector. I mean, they're polar opposites. One's looking for where's the growth, and one's looking for where's the opportunity and in, in in beating up areas. Uh, and then financial base is literally just trying to, to out maneuver, uh, some of these areas that, uh, uh, some, some of your routine screeners where, I mean, that's not the first place to look, uh, right. cause everyone, everyone's looked there. So how, how can okay. you kind of out maneuver, uh, investors? Any sectors that feel, uh, extremely stretched and overvalued to you at this point in the market cycle? Yeah, parts of Staples. I mean, look, McDonald's. McDonald's is trading at almost thirty times with no revenue growth. Um, okay. I don't know about you, but if if you were going to buy a house and it was going to take you thirty years to uh to uh to get the cash flow back, I I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and it's good franchise, good business, good management, all the good stuff. But uh, Nike is a is kind of another one, um, similar. Uh, Thesis, even even Under Armour. I mean, you're looking at it, it's still trading extremely uh, rich. And I've been uh, talking about it for a while uh, on that side because I mean the the trends are negative uh, operationally, and and for whatever reason they continue to get a a pretty nice multiple. Um, so so staples, uh, some of the apparel, footwear, uh, as they shift the technology, people are. I guess giving them more of a premium uh, multiple like a Nike just because they have a Nike Run Club app uh, doesn't make them a tech company. Um, do, you, do you ever delve into areas outside of uh, technology being your bailiwick? Like, for example, uh, energy has become uh, a more constructive, the action's been pretty constructive. They've been out of favor for a long time. Um, the miners are pretty cheap. Do you ever delve into any commodity-related uh, groups? Yeah, so it's 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 saying yes and then saying no, right? Because going into Halliburton, uh, Schlumberger, Baker Hughes is almost like being in a, in the tech side of of energy. Uh, Interesting. Okay. So, so yeah, I mean, a two-second so piece. Of time. Even within old old the old economy. You could find uh, tech plays in the old economy now, making the transition like Albert. Yeah, I mean they created the problem if you think about it, right? Fracking. Um, yeah. I mean, they're, uh, we went in that space and said, who's creating the problem? Uh, that's who we want to own, um, not the, not the ones that are 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 are, are dependent on the problem uh, creator. Uh, so that was our thesis there. Um, and and that, that's essentially what led us to to those players in that industry. And again, that started with with a weak sector transition based uh, kind of idea source. Right. Uh, and then we came up with that overall thesis. And then, uh, but this was this has been years in the making. So. Okay. So why don't we spend the last few minutes, uh, perhaps showing your website, the Market Meter, and uh, tell us what it does. And since we're on Avery and Company. Uh, is this a registered investment advisor or research firm? What is Avery? Yeah, so Market Meter, um, personal blog. It's something where I like to share different ideas, topics, whatnot. Um, very short, so I don't like to read too much. I, I prefer videos. Um, I read a lot, but when it comes to reading specific small blips on, on markets, I like uh, extremely short pieces and 
and that's what you'll you'll find on 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 the market meters. I mean, okay. that's exactly the length you're getting. It takes you two minutes to read something, if that. And then when you look at Avery, more it's our registered investment advisor. Um, okay. Again, we're, we're focused on on investing in individual companies and uh, concentrated book of companies. So we're not investing in 50, 60, 100 names. We're investing in um, eight to 25 or so, and and trying to discover um, kind of these businesses in which offer value either through growth or or through these transitions and. Um, that's really the, the two different verticals that, that we do. And all of our research is independent to us, so we don't leverage of any of the big wirehouses or uh, investment banks. So that's uh, that's what we're doing. Okay. Well, yeah, I want to thank you so much. Great meeting you. would like to be able to address you as my trading warrior brother, Sean. And, <laughs> wish, and, and wish you, you know, continued success and, uh, you know, may your clients at Avery continue to do well and uh, want to encourage people, uh, although Forex is our bailiwick, uh, um, a lot of our audience, guys, you have the retirement in the market, whether you know it or not, maybe you, uh, take a look at Sean's commentary on the market meter and just want to wish you a great holiday season and 2018 ahead of you, Sean. No, thank you. And yeah, the uh and same to you and, and Forex and and what I do daily aren't mutually exclusive. So uh a lot of our companies get influenced by by what's most talked about on, on this uh on this show. So uh there's definitely synergies there and, and, and yeah, it's good stuff. Okay, buddy. Well good hunting and uh really I'm I'm glad to have met you and let's keep in touch and we'll do it again sometime next year, okay? For sure. For sure. Happy Thanksgiving if I don't uh, speak to you then. All right, Sean. Everyone, that's Sean Emery. Uh, his Twitter <laughs> handle is underscore at Sean and, uh, Emery. And uh, thank you. And see everyone. We'll wrap up the week. TGIF tomorrow. Good hunting the rest of the day. And remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Thank you, Face. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Blake. And thank you, Sean, for a great. And uh, thank you, investing.com, for joining us today. Adios.